Hello everyone, welcome to this week's 3D design activity brought to you by the Corona Public Library's Maker Exchange. My name is Mr. Martin and today I'll be walking you through creating your very own personalized desk organizer. It's a fairly straightforward but very useful 3D design. We're all working from home, school has started for many of us, and we all know we need better ways to get organized. So, let's get started. Fire up your favorite internet browser and go to tinkercad.com and sign in. Once loaded, you'll see your recent designs on your home page, but we're going to go ahead and click New Design. Once the software gets loaded, you'll notice we have our work plane in the middle. Left mouse click selects objects, middle mouse click moves the work plane around, and the right mouse click changes the camera angle. We have our object pane on the right, camera angles up on the left, and we can rename our file by clicking on the name in the top left. So once we do that, we're ready to go. It's going to auto save. So just one thing to note, before we insert any objects though, let's go ahead and change our snap grid to 0.25 millimeters. That's just going to let us be a little bit more accurate when placing and combining multiple objects. So speaking of objects, on your right hand side you'll notice you have a wide array of selection here. Let's go ahead and just choose a simple box and plop it down. Now it's your choice whether you want to get it lined up or not yet. You can always move it around later, um, but for now let's just try and get it fairly close to that grid there and we want to expand it first. So we can either click on that dot or type in the number in order to change the width here. So let's go ahead and change that to 60. That's just going to be a nice round number for us for now. And the next thing we want to do is make it a little flatter. So go ahead and shrink it down. Again, you don't want to make it too thin, otherwise uh, you, whenever you do go to 3D print it, uh, you want to make sure that you can actually print that layer thickness. Again, you can always scale it later though, so for now this is just mostly a reference for us to work with. So next up, let's start thinking about where we're going to put our pencils. So we're going to insert a cylinder here. And right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and select the cylinder and hit Control c to copy it and that's going to pull up another cylinder right next to it. Holding shift and clicking on any of the uh, transform dots on the side, we can make it a little smaller. And once we do that, go ahead and drag it inside of the other cylinder. Now to get it more accurate, you can always click on the view cube on the top left and make sure that you choose the top view just to make sure that your object is actually centered in there. It's a lot easier than dealing with uh, using the mouse key for the camera controls. So once you've got it centered, you want to make sure that it is pulled up a little bit and that it is not going through the object. So here I'm actually going to pull it down a little bit. You can notice I can still transform because I only have the inner cylinder selected here. Now once I'm satisfied with what that would look like, I'm going to go ahead into the shape window and hit hole and then make sure you select both objects. You can either hold shift and click on the other cylinder or simply click and drag to highlight both. And once you have both selected, group them and the software will cut out one cylinder from the other. And now you have a place to put your pencils or pens. So now simply move it on over. You can try and connect it to the base, uh, but again, for now it's mostly just a reference just to help us see uh, and visualize what our final product is going to look like. Um, so get it anywhere close and you should be good to go. Um, now we obviously want to mirror this on the other side uh, in case we needed a spot you know if you want to have pencils and pens separate. Um, I'm that kind of person so I'm going to do that and instead of inserting two cylinders and doing that whole thing again since we've created a single object we can simply hit control C and control V to copy or paste. Notice that I hit Control X on accident, which cut it. Don't do that. <laughs> so once you copy and paste it over, you can simply move it to the other side. Do your best to make sure they're lined up. And now we're ready to continue with our base. Now we have our bottom panel, as well as a place for both our pencils and our pens. Um, so let's go ahead and finish the base here. And what I'm going to do is just copy the, the bottom panel and we're going to start creating uh, slabs on the side so that we can have a nice box to store trinkets and little you know knickknacks you might have on your desk, erasers, paper clips, things like that. So with the base copied we're going to first rotate it on over 
And again, there are two ways to do this. We can make a huge box and carve out the inside, or we can simply do one side at a time, which is what we're going to do here. Uh, that just gives us a bit more control uh, with the, or in terms of the overall design. Uh, we can edit every single side as we so choose. So once we've got it lined up, we're just going to move it on over and connect it. We're not going to group it just yet because there will be some adjustments that we'll have to make at the end before we group everything together. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just squeeze it on over. Let's put this one in the back. And thanks to our 0.25 snap grid, uh, when we zoom in, we can see that we're still a little off base here. Um, you can use your keyboard keys, the arrow keys, to move it on over in either direction. Um, but here I'm just going to do my best to kind of just snap it in there. Again, zoom in, make sure it's nice and flush. Once you've got it, just check the other side and make sure we're good to go. So same as before, I'm going to copy that back panel. You'll notice now I can group them if I select both the base and the back, and that'll make it one solid object. Um, and then I can edit it, rotate it, shrink it, enlarge it, do whatever I want it to do uh, with it in terms of one object. But we're going to undo that. We want it ungrouped so that we can copy it over. First, we're going to make it a little taller. And we're just going to adjust some of the other shapes here. And this is the reason we didn't want to group it um, and that we're just kind of placing things as a reference. There will be a lot of little adjustments you'll have to make before you finish your product. But let's get back to finishing up the base. So select the back panel, copy it, pull it to the front, and this is purely a design choice here, but I'm going to lower this just a little bit. You can keep it just one solid or one even box object. Um, I kind of like the idea of the front lip being a little lower. So I'm just going to take a look around, make sure things are fairly lined up. And I'm actually going to notice here on the right that it is a little offset, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a bit. My next step is to properly integrate the cylinders into the base. And so right now what I'm doing is just making sure that my base is finished. Um, so that way I can line everything up properly. Um, so all I'm doing here is just making sure the base looks pretty good. Again, I can always adjust later, but for now I want to focus on the cylinders. Taking a look over here on the side, you'll notice that there is a gap between the cylinder and the base. And this is what we're going to address now. So I want it to be a nice flat line. And there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, one, we can move the cylinder over. We can insert a box. And what we're going to do is simply cut out that part of the box now, or the cylinder. Now we can line up the box and get it the same exact dimensions of the base, and then simply use that to cut out the cylinder. Um, but there is a way to make the base work for us here. So instead, we can be a little smarter about it. And we're going to move the cylinder over to where we want it to be on the base. And this is going to take advantage of the selection options, um, in which case we won't be selecting the base, and we're going to be using that uh, to edit the cylinder. So here, just again, line up the cylinder. This is where you want to make sure it's nice and perfect, no gaps on the edges. And thinking ahead to the printing process, you also want to make sure that it's not kind of, you know, there's not much overhang or there's not, you know, any lips on the side that will cause trouble printing later. So here I am satisfied with the overall shape. And all I'm going to do now is simply move the box over to where the edge of the base is. So now instead of having to guess or to change the size of the box or anything, all I did was line it up, select the cylinder now with the box. So you notice using the selection tool chooses parts of the base, but simply hitting shift lets you choose both of those objects. So now pull them out. And all that's left now is to enlarge the box and then use the whole tool or the whole option uh, to cut out this slice of our cylinder. So select the box, enlarge it both on the top and bottom. Notice I'm not enlarging the sides. I already had those measured out when I lined it up with the base. Choose the whole option, select both, and group them. 
And now we have our nice little slice that we wanted. Um, but what we didn't want here is that edge to be completely cut out or else our pencils and pens are going to spill into the middle uh, container that we've created. So instead, choose another box, and all we're going to do is make a simple wall here. Now we can make this wall on both the base or the cylinder. It doesn't really matter, um, but all we're going to do is simply make a wall and then group those two objects together. Again, use the keyboard keys to take advantage of the snap grid to make sure it's properly lined up. And once you've got the shape complete, then simply select both, group them together, and move it on over to the base. So now is where we really want to make sure things are lined up, because now we are just about to finish our project here. So you can use the keyboard keys, you can use the mouse, change the camera angle, whatever you need to do to make sure that the walls are all lined up. So here it's starting to look pretty good. We've basically got most of it finished now and all that's left is the other side. So we can repeat the exact same process or since we've already done it and this is one solid object, get rid of the yellow cylinder and simply copy and paste over the one we just created. Drag it on over, spin it around 180 degrees. It's usually easier just to press enter there. Um, and now we've got the other side. Line it up the same as before. And there you have it. You have, it almost looks like a couch, but it is your very own personal desk organizer. Um, again here, to finish off, always want to make sure you're lining things up before you group them for the final print. So it's a good idea just to go through, make sure everything's lined up. Here I do notice that one side is a little higher than the other, so you'll notice me uh, kind of shrink it down. But I'm just going through using the keyboard keys to take advantage of the snap grid, lining everything up, make sure it's symmetrical. I'm going to bring this wall up here a little bit just to give myself more space. Make sure it's lined up. We do have a little lip here, so we want to make sure we get rid of that. To prepare it for printing, we simply want to select all of the objects here, group them together, and make sure that the software knows that they are one solid object. So that is what we're going to call the base. From here, you can actually customize it. So you can scale it to make it bigger, uh, hold shift to maintain the aspect ratio, otherwise you're going to get some wonky dimensions here. You'll notice if you accidentally mess up, you just press shift and it simply toggles. Um, but going back to the customization, you can either add space in the front or you could add space in the back. I don't have very much room on my desk for a you know, wide organizer, but what I could use is some space to store my papers. Now I have the inside. You can create a divider here uh, for the left and right, but what I want to do is create uh, some kind of paper holder in the back. So to do that, I'm going to scroll down to the tube and I'm simply going to select it and drag it in there. So I'm sure you've seen some similar design uh, at some point, and if you haven't, well, that's what we're here for, to learn. So simply snapping this over, I'm going to resize it just to be a perfect four millimeters, and then I'm going to enlarge it. You'll notice I did hold shift when doing that to maintain the overall dimensions of the uh, tube here. And as with the cylinders, we want to cut out the bottom part. So I'm simply going to insert a box here. Make sure it is going through the entirety of the tube. So here we go. Everything that I want to cut out. 
is there. Make sure it goes all the way through the bottom so that no material is left hanging here. And finally use the hole tool to cut that out. Now I can simply uh, create an additional layer of base here to snap that onto. Um, but I mostly just wanted to show you this part as an exercise in what kind of customization is possible. So now I have a place in the back of my organizer to store notes, um, post-its, mail even. Um, so it's very useful what this software can do. So if I really did want this, all I would need to do now is just simply either connect it or add an extra layer on the bottom uh, to join it to the base and to leave space for papers. Now you'll notice this whole space under the arc is empty. That's one thing you want to watch out for. If it's too thin um, or not wide enough, really, um, 3D printers will have trouble with that. So some slicing uh, software will provide supports for you. Um, others won't. So you do have to be mindful when printing uh, arches like that. Now here, another layer of customization you can add is your name. And by changing the shapes option to text, clicking on that shape window, simply typing in your name, we're going to run into that same issue where we're printing material that's essentially hanging out in space. So if I pull this in here, first of course we got to adjust it, make sure it looks good. So now when I attach it, there is material essentially hanging off of the side. Oh, and it looks like the resizing tool here messed up. So if that ever happens to you, uh, when holding shift to try and change the size, simply just click on any one of the other dimensional dots and you'll be able to resize it just fine. So again, you'll have material hanging over. Be mindful of that when printing. It would be a lot easier if we um, had a way to connect this face to the base and simply printed this flat then the 3D printer could easily print the text on top of that existing base material. Um, if we were to print it like this, it would likely have some issues here, but that's something you could change in the software. So there you have it, friends. There's your desk organizer. You can customize it however you'd like. And if you like this kind of content, as always, please feel free to check out the rest of our videos. We'll see you on the next one.